The Valor, Valor, singular Valor are characters in J.R.R. Tolkien's Legendarium. They are angelic powers or gods. Subordinate to the One God they are the most powerful of the Ainur who chose to go into the world Arda and complete its material development after its form was determined by the music of the Ainur For this reason they are also referred to as, "...the powers of the world." They are mentioned in The Lord of the Rings, but were developed earlier in material published posthumously in The Silmarillion and The History of Middle-earth. The term Valor is applied occasionally by Tolkien to include all of the Ainur who entered the world, but more frequently to refer specifically to the fourteen most powerful of them, the "...lords and ladies of the Valor". <inaudible> <inaudible> Origin and Acts Eru Iluvatar first revealed to the Ainur his great vision of the world through musical themes unfolding a history whose vastness and majesty had never been equaled the music of the Ainur, the Silmarillion, this world, fashioned from his ideas and expressed as the music of Iluvatar, was refined by thoughtful interpretations by the Ainur, who then created their own themes based on each unique comprehension. No one Ainu understood all of the themes that sprang from Iluvatar. Instead, each elaborated individual themes, singing of mountains and subterranean regions, say, from themes for metals and stones. The themes of Iluvatar's music were elaborated, and the Ainur added creative touches to blend with the themes of other Ainur. Melkor, however, added discordant themes, he strove against the music, his themes became evil because they sprang from selfishness and vanity, not from the enlightenment of Iluvatar. Once the music was complete, including Melkor's interwoven themes of vanity, Iluvatar gave the Ainur a choice—to dwell with him, or to enter the world that they had mutually created. Those that chose to enter the world became known as the Valor, the powers of Arda, though the elves generally reserved that term for the more powerful of them. The lesser Valor they called the Maya. Among the Valor were some of the most powerful and wise of the Ainur, including Manwe, the lord of the Valor, and also Melkor, his brother. The two are distinguished by the selfless love of Manwe for the music of Iluvatar, and the selfish love that Melkor bore for himself and no other least of all for the children of Iluvatar, as the elves and men became known. Melkor later named Morgoth, Dark Enemy arrived in the world first, causing tumult wherever he went. He would have been one of the Valar. As the others arrived, they saw how Melkor's presence would destroy the integrity of Iluvatar's themes. Eventually, and with the aid of the Valar Tulkas, who entered Arda last, Melkor was temporarily overthrown, and the Valar began shaping the world and creating beauty to counter the darkness and ugliness of Melkor's discordant noise. The Valar dwelt originally on the Isle of Almaran in the middle of the world, but after its destruction and the loss of the world's symmetry, they moved to the western continent of Amman and founded Valinor. The war with Melkor continued, the Valar realized many wonderful subthemes of Ilivatar's grand music, while Melkor poured all his energy into Arda and the corruption of creatures like Balrogs, dragons, and orcs. Most terrible of the early deeds of Melkor was the destruction of the two lamps, and with them the original home of the Valar, the Isle of Almaran. Melkor was then captured and chained for many ages in the fastness of Mandos until he was pardoned by Manwe. With the arrival of the elves in the world and later in Valinor, a new phase of the regency of the Valar began. Summoned by the Valar, many elves abandoned Middle-earth and the eastern continent for the west, where the Valar concentrated their creativity. There they made the two trees, their greatest joy because it gave light to the beauty of Valinor and pleased the elves. At Melkor's instigation, however, Ungoliant destroyed the trees. Fina, a Noldoran elf, had, with great forethought and love, captured the light of the two trees in three Silmarils, the greatest jewels ever created. Melkor stole the Silmarils from Fina and killed his father, Finwë, chief of the Noldor in Amman, and thereupon fled to Middle-earth. 
Many of the Noldor, in defiance of the will of the Valor, swore revenge and set out in pursuit. This event, and the poisonous words of Melkor that fostered mistrust among the elves, led to the exile of the greater part of the Noldor to Middle Earth. The Valor closed Valinor against them to prevent their return. For the remainder of the First Age, Ulmo alone of the Valor visited the world beyond Aman. Ulmo directly influenced the actions of Chuor, setting him on the path to find the hidden city of Gondolin. At the end of the First Age, the Valor sent forth a great host of Maya and elves from Valinor to Middle-earth, who fought the War of Wrath in which Melkor was defeated. The lands were changed, and the elves were again called to Valinor. During the Second Age, the Valor's main deeds were the creation of Numenor as a refuge for the Edain, who were denied access to Aman but given dominion over the rest of the world. The Valor, now including even Ulmo, remained aloof from Middle-earth, allowing the rise of Morgoth's lieutenant, Sauron, to power as a new Dark Lord. Near the end of the Second Age, Sauron convinced the Numenorians to attack Aman itself. Then Manwe upon the mountain called upon Iluvatar, and for that time the Valor laid down their government of Arda. Akalabeth, the Silmarillion, with the Akalabeth, the destruction of Numenor, Aman was removed from the earth though not from the world, for elvish ships could still reach it. In the Third Age the Valor sent the Istari or wizards to Middle-earth to aid in the battle against Sauron. <laughs> List of the Valor These are the names and attributes of the chief Valor as they were known to the Eldar in Amman. In Middle-earth, they were known by other names of Sindarin origin, Varda, for example, was called Elbereth. Men knew them by many other names, and sometimes worshipped them as gods. With the exception of Orom, the names listed below are not actual names but rather titles, the true names of the Valor are nowhere recorded. The males are called Lords of the Valor, the females, Queens of the Valor, or Valia. Of the seven male and seven female Valor, there are six married pairs. Ulmo and Niena are the only ones who dwell alone. This is evidently a form of spiritual union, as in Tolkien's later conception, they do not reproduce in a manner reminiscent of the classical Greek gods. The Aratar, Aratar Quenya, Exalted or High Ones of Ara are the eight greatest of the Valor, Manwe, Varda, Olmo, Yavana, All, Mandos, Niena, and Orom. Lorien and Mandos are brothers and are referred to collectively as the Fienturi Fienturi, Masters of Spirits. <laughs> Lords Topic Manway. He is the king of the Valor, husband of Varda Alentari and king of Arda. He lived atop Mount Tanakettle, the highest mountain of the world, in the halls of Ilmarin. The winds and airs were his servants, and he was lord of air, wind, and clouds in Arda. He was the noblest and greatest in authority, but not in power, of the Ainur and the greatest of the Aratar. Topic Almo, Lord of Waters. Unlike the other Valor, he was not married and had no fixed dwelling place. He lived in the deep waters of the ocean and seldom troubled to come to Valinor unless the need was dire. Almo was one of the chief architects of Arda. In authority, he was second to Manwe. Topic All. Husband of Yavana, all is given lordship over the matter that composes Arda and is a master of all the crafts that shape it. He created the seven fathers of the dwarves, who call him Mahal, the Maker. Eru the one was not pleased, as the stone people were not of the original theme, but when they cringed upon all's hammer, Eru pardoned all's disobedience, but noted the repercussions, including the love of the dwarves' iron for Yavana's trees. 
During the music of the Ainur, all's themes concerned the physical things of which Arda is made. When Eru Iluvatar gave being to the themes of the Ainur, his music became the lands of Middle Earth. Other of his works include Angaina, the chain of Melkor, the two lamps, and the vessels of the sun and moon. Topic: Orom, brother of Nessa and husband of Vanna, also known as Aro in Sindarin, Aldarin, Lord of the Trees, Aram, Bema, Aram, the huntsman of the valor, and the great rider. Orom, Orom was active in the struggle against Morgoth. He was renowned for his anger, being the most terrible of the valor in his wrath. He had a mighty horn called Valoroma and a steed called Nahar. During the years of the trees, after most of the valor had withdrawn completely from Middle Earth and hidden themselves in Amman, Orom still hunted the enemy in the forests of Middle Earth with Juan, the hound of the valor. There he found the elves at Kuvinan. In The Return of the King, Theoden is compared to Orom when he leads the charge of Roerim in the Battle of the Pelena Fields, Fahi seemed, or the battle fury of his fathers ran like new fire in his veins, and he was borne up on snowman like a god of old, even as Orom the Great in the Battle of the Valor when the world was young. <laughs> Mandos. Judge of the Dead and the Master of Doom. Named Namo -na -mo, but referred to more commonly as Mandos, Mandos after the halls of his dwelling. Chief advisor to Manway and keeper of the souls of elves. He is the husband of Ver the Weaver. Mandos is described as being stern and dispassionate and never forgetting a thing. He was the valor who spoke the prophecy of the North against the Noldor leaving Amman, and who counseled that they should not be allowed to return. Tears unnumbered ye shall shed, and the valor will fence Valinor against you, and shut you out, so that not even the echo of your lamentation shall pass over the mountains. On the house of Fina the wrath of the valor leath from the west unto the uttermost east, and upon all that will follow them it shall be laid also. Their oath shall drive them, and yet betray them, and ever snatch away the very treasures that they have sworn to pursue. To evil end shall all things turn that they begin well, and by treason of kin unto kin, and the fear of treason, shall this come to pass. The dispossessed shall they be for ever. The pronouncement of this doom was the cause for the return to Eldamar of one of Fina's brothers, Fenarfin, already reluctant to pursue Morgoth against the will of the Valar, and his people. There they asked for and received the forgiveness of the Valar. The prophecies and judgments of Mandos, unlike Morgoth, are not cruel or vindictive by his own design. They are simply the will of Eru, and he will not speak them unless he is commanded to do so by Manwe. Only once has he been moved to pity, when Luthien sang of the grief she and her lover Beren had experienced in Beleriand. Topic: <laughs> Lorien, master of visions and dreams, named Ermo, Ermo, but referred to more commonly as Lorien, Lorien, after his dwelling place. Lorien and Mandos are the Fienturi, masters of spirits. Lorien, the younger, is the master of visions and dreams. His gardens in the land of the Valor, where he dwells with his spouse Este, are the fairest place in the world and are filled with many spirits. All those who dwell in Valinor find rest and refreshment at the fountain of Ermo and Este. Since he is the master of dreams, he and his servants are well aware of the hopes and dreams of the children of Eru. Oloran, or Gandalf, prior to his assignment by Manwe to a role as one of the Istari, was a mire long taught in the gardens of Lorien. Tulkas Tulkas, Tulkas the strong, champion of Valinor, also called Astaldo the brave one. He was the last of the Valor to descend into Arda, and helped to tip the scales against Melkor after the destruction of the two lamps. He is a wrestler and physically the strongest of all the Valor. His fist is his only weapon. 
he laughs in sport and in war, and even laughed in the face of Melkor. He is the husband of Nessa, and is described as slow to anger, but slow also to forget. As such, he opposed the release of Melkor after his prison sentence. Topic: <laughs> Queens. Topic: <laughs> Varda. Lady of the Stars, the Kindler, spouse of Manwe, titled Alentari in Quenya and Elbereth Gilthoniel in Sindarin. She kindled the first stars before the Ainur descended into the world, and later brightened them with the gold and silver dew from the two trees. Melkor feared and hated her the most, because she rejected him before time. The Elvish hymn appears in three differing forms in The Lord of the Rings. Yavana 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 is queen of the earth and giver of fruits, spouse of all, also called Kementari She created the two trees, and is responsible for the Kelvar animals and Olva plants. It was she who requested the creation of the Ents, as she feared for the safety of the trees once her husband had created the dwarves. The two lamps are created by all at Yavanna's request, and their light germinates the seeds that she had planted. Following the destruction of the two lamps by Melkor and the withdrawal of the valor to Amman, Yavanna sang into being the two trees of Valinor. <laughs> Topic: Nienna. Lady of mercy acquainted with grief. She was the tutor of Olorin, and weeps constantly. But she does not weep for herself, and those who hearken to her learn pity, and endurance in hope. She gives strength to those in the Hall of Mandos. Her tears are those of healing and pity, not of sadness, and often have potency. For example, she watered the two trees with her tears, and later washed the filth of Ungoliant away from them once they were destroyed. She was in favor of releasing Melkor after his sentence, not being able to see his evil nature. She has no spouse. Este Referred to as the gentle and the healer of hurts and of weariness. Her name este means rest. Grey is her raiment, and rest her gift. She is the wife of Ermo, and lives with him in his gardens of Lorien in Valinor. She sleeps at day on the island in the Lake Lorellin. <laughs> Ver Entitled the Weaver, Ver Vi, Re, is the wife of Namo and lives with him at Mandos. She weaves the story of the world in her tapestries, which are draped all over the halls of Mandos. Topic Vanna, called Queen of Blossoming Flowers and the Ever Young, Vanna V A N A is the younger sister of Yavanna and wife of Orom. All flowers spring as she passes and open if she glances upon them, and all birds sing at her coming. She dwells in gardens filled with golden flowers and often comes to the forests of Orom. Tolkien wrote that Vanna was the most perfectly beautiful in form and feature also holy but not august or sublime representing the natural unmarred perfection of form in living things topic <laughs> nessa entitled the dancer she is the wife of tolkas and sister of orom Noted for her agility and speed, she is able to outrun the deer who follow her in the wild, and is known for her love of dancing and celebration on the evergreen lawns of Valinor. Topic: Others. Topic: Melkor. The first Dark Lord. His name means, he who arises in might. 
He was the first of the Ainur to be created by Eru Iluvatar and the one who created discord in the music of the Ainur. The spiritual brother of Manwe, he was the most powerful of the Valar, as he possessed all aspects of Eru's thought, whereas the others each possessed only some. He turned to evil, and was taken back to Valina in the chain Angana after the awakening of the elves in Kuvinan. He remained on parole in Valina for three ages, but after the poisoning of the two trees and the theft of the Silmarils, he fled from Valina. He was no longer counted among the Valar, and Fina, one of the leaders of the Noldoran elves, called him Morgoth Borgalir, the Great Enemy, by which name he was known in Middle Earth ever after. He was cast out of Arda at the end of the War of Wrath. <laughs> Relationships between Valar Iluvatar brought the Valar and all of the Ainur into being by his thought, and may therefore be considered their father. However, not all of the Valar are siblings, where this is held to be so, it is because they are so, in the thought of Iluvatar. It was the Valar who first practiced marriage and later passed on their custom to the elves. All the Valar had spouses, save Niena, Ulmo, and Melkor. However, only one such marriage among the Valar took place within the world, that of Tulkas and Nessa after the raising of the two lamps. <laughs> Concept and creation In the Book of Lost Tales the earliest form of Tolkien's legendarium, the Valar are frequently referred to as gods indicating a polytheistic system in Tolkien's original cosmology. However, Iluvatar is present as the supreme creator god who brings the Valar into existence and is shown to be a being of a higher order. It is thus unclear whether the Valar are truly gods or simply thought of as such by the people of Arda. In any case, Tolkien eventually abandoned this description of the Valar, defining them simply as «powers» in his later works. In the Book of Lost Tales, Mandos was named Vefenter, and his halls Ve. His wife was Fui, who can be compared to Niena though in that context they were not married. He judged the elves, while Fui judged the men. He turned away Turin and Ninori from his halls in the second volume. A different Ver appeared in some of Tolkien's earliest writings. In the Book of Lost Tales, she was an elf of Tol Erisaia. She and her husband Lindo tell the stories that would become the Silmarillion to the human mariner Alfwine, Ariol. Her role as storyteller may have influenced the naming of the Valar responsible for recording stories. The Lost Tales also have two additional Valar, Maka and Mias, who occupy roles similar to war gods of classical myth. These characters are dropped from Tolkien's later works. Valeran, the tongue of the Valar <inaudible> External history Tolkien at first decided that Valeran, the tongue of the Valar as it is called in Quenya, would be the proto-language of the elves, the tongue Orom taught to the speechless elves. He then developed the Valeran tongue and its grammar in the early 1930s. Ten years later he decided to drop that idea, and the tongue he had developed became primitive Quendian instead. He then conceived an entirely new tongue for the Valar, still called Valeran in Quenya. <laughs> <laughs> Internal story The Valar as spiritual immortal beings have the ability to communicate through thought, and had no need for a spoken language, but it appears that Valeran developed because of their assumption of physical, human-like or elf-like forms. Valeran is unrelated to the other languages constructed by J. R. R. Tolkien. Only a few words mainly proper names of Valeran have been recorded by the elves. Valeran was alien to the ears of the elves, sometimes to the point of genuine displeasure, 
398 and very few of them ever learn the language, only adopting some of the Valeran words into their own Quenya. The Valar knew Quenya, and used it to converse with the elves, or with each other if elves were present. Valeran contained sounds that the elves found difficult to produce, and the words were mostly long. 398, for example, the word for Telperion, one of the two trees of Valinor, Ibriniel Pathanesel, is eight syllables long. The Vanyar adopted more words into their Vanyar and Tarquester dialect from Valeran than the Noldor, as they lived closer to the Valar. Some of the elven names of the Valar, such as Manwe, Ulmo, and Orom, are adapted loanwords of their Valeran names. According to the earlier conception set forth in the Lamas, the Valeran language family is subdivided into Oromian, Orlian and Melkian tongues. In this work, all elvish languages are descended from the tongue of Orom, while the dwarves spoke the tongue devised by the Valar Orl, and the speech of the orcs was invented for them by the Valar Melkor. Topic. Comparison with the Eldalar of C.S. Lewis The Eldalar in the Space Trilogy of C.S. Lewis bear a passing resemblance to the Valar. Tolkien and Lewis regularly critiqued one another's writing, and Lewis knew of the Valar before he wrote Out of the Silent Planet, the first book in the Space Trilogy. Both the Valar and the Eldalar seek to some extent to rationalize the classical gods with Christian belief, both are called not «gods» but servants of the single true god — Iluvatar in the one case, Maleldal in the other. Both take on visual «raiment» to be visible to earthly eyes, and both have essential gender identities. But they differ in many details. The Eldalar tend to correspond more closely to specific classical gods, and largely maintain the traditional association between gods and planets. The Valar reside on Earth, while each Eldal has the responsibility for a single planet, and seems principally to reside there. See also Maya Middle Earth Quinta Silmarillion Timeline of Arda Valaquenta <laughs>